To terminate a lease with customer purchase, you'll start in cash receipts and click on lease termination. When you enter the contract number or search by customer name, then the system will open the termination activity. Here you have your tabs where you can edit or review lessee information, look at account information, view any notes that have been added to the system, and look at alerts or outstanding invoices for the lease. To create the lease termination, you'll click on that tab. The system is going to default to purchase vehicle, and then we're going to work through the different areas to complete the activity. Here going across, we have potential balances. So these are the outstanding balances that will be due at termination. So I have an adjusted lease balance of 8766.19. This is because this is an early termination with purchase, so I have that outstanding lease balance. It's taxable, so at the end here I have 9314.08 that will need to be applied or accounted for upon termination. Next to this I have my vehicle information tab where I can document the condition of the vehicle. Here back at the left I've got my evaluation values for termination. The system takes into account the residual amount of the vehicle and then it gives you an editable field for the market value. If this is an early termination situation, the market value may be different. So if it is, you can then account for the difference in this field. You're going to say where you were quoted or where you got that quote from for the market value. And then you have the option next to maintain any fees that are outstanding on the lease. This could include any of your leasing fees, such as a purchase option fee or an early termination fee. It could also include late fees or any other outstanding fees that have been accrued during the term of the lease. So I don't have any that I need to worry about, but if you did, you could come in here and maintain or waive those fees. You can also, in the lease termination area, create a quote for the termination, which will take into consideration a snapshot view of the balances and fees that are due at this point. So you can enter the date through which you want the termination quote to be valid, and the system will save that snapshot for you. You can then print that for the lessee or customer if they would like the detailed itemization of the lease. Now I have above that the available credits window. I have a security deposit that I received of $200. This can either be returned to the customer or it can be applied to the termination. So you can see here I have that credit that needs to be applied. When I'm ready to apply any monies that I need to apply and then restock and sell the vehicle, I can click create pending term. This is going to create a situation where the system is alerted that you are about to terminate this lease so no more regular payments will be taken on this lease contract. If somebody did need to post a payment for whatever reason then you could come in and you could reverse the pending term and apply that payment. Now I'm going to come over here to my net applied area and I'm going to apply the monies that I have for this outstanding uh, balance. So I've got $200 that is a security deposit that I can apply and if I had any monies over that that maybe the customer was making a payment then I can apply those as well. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and click Commit Apply. And actually what I'm going to do in this situation, just so we can see the example, I'm going to say I received a cash payment for this. And I will commit that money. 
and then the system's going to account for the monies. Now I'm going to refund the security deposit. I know the likelihood of refunding a security deposit is very slim, but I'm going to show you how you would do that. So you click refund security deposit, put the amount that you're going to refund, and then click save. Now the system has taken into consideration the refunded amount of the security deposit. When you're terminating a lease with a purchase, you technically have to stock that vehicle back into inventory and then create the actual sale. Most people will create the sale for the residual amount and then possibly the balance owed. So if I were to do that, then I could click restock. The system is gonna ask me if I want to return the vehicle or not. I do want to return the vehicle. There's my new car cost that's going to be returned, which is the equivalent of the residual. And when I save that, I can change the stock number if necessary. And then I should get a message asking me if I want to sell this vehicle. Well, if the customer is purchasing the lease, then yes, I want to sell that. So the system will come over and load an actual sale in the sales activity center. I can come over. I could, if the situation granted it, I could go ahead and create a receivable sale, but I'm going to do a cash sale. The customer's going to purchase this. I'm going to put in the residual amount and I'm not going to be charging fees or taxes on this, they're just going to pay the residual. And then what I'll do, I'll end up putting in the cash down amount as the amount that they're paying, since they are paying cash for this. And then I'll go ahead and click Save as Sale. I'm going to say, I'm just going to say cash. If you get a cashier's check or they're paying with a credit card, put that in and save the sale. You can print documents if you need to print them, print a receipt. And the system will save the sale. Once the sale is completed, you'll go back into lease termination and you're gonna finalize your termination. So click finalize. It's gonna ask if you wanna print a receipt, say no, and then say yes, this is a cash termination. If there's a loss, then you'll assign your gain or loss to the correct GL account. And then there's no cash. This is a no cash payoff. Say yes. And you have then completed your lease termination with purchase. You at this point can exit lease termination, continue with this contract, or search for another one.